Edward. Students, in this session, we are going to start a new chapter. And the name of the chapter is called Periodic Classification of Elements. Students, have you ever seen how in big malls, different kinds of things are beautifully arranged? In big malls, you'll see that they have different sections for different kinds of things. For example, they have different sections for food, different section for clothes, different section for home appliances, and different sections for other kinds of things also. So they have different sections and in each section you'll also notice that they have certain subsections also. So in clothes section you'll see that they have different shelves for different kinds of clothes. For example different shelves for jeans, different shelves for t-shirts, different shelves for shirts and other kinds of clothes also. So have you ever thought what is the reason behind that? So in big malls they have large collection of things of different kinds of things and if they did not arrange the things properly then it will be very difficult for us to find anything amid such a vast collection so to make the process of buying easier for us they arrange the things properly so for example if i want to buy jeans for me so first of all i will go to the clothes section then i will find the shelves where jeans are placed so, so that I can buy the jeans. So it's so easy, isn't it? So this is the first reason of arranging the things or arranging the things according to their property. And there is another reason behind this. So the another reason is that comparison of things is easy when the things are placed together. For example, if I want to buy that jeans, first of all, I have to go to that section or the shelves where jeans are placed. And in that section or shelves, different kinds of jeans or jeans from different brands are also placed so i can compare between the jeans from different brands and i can find the best jeans which is suitable for me so this comparison is easy so just because they were placed together if they would have been placed different parts of the malls then it would have been very difficult for me to compare between them so these are the basically advantages of classification or arranging the things according to the properties so that is why they arrange or they put so much effort in arranging the things in malls now you might be thinking why i am talking about these malls and stuff in this chemistry session so the reason behind is that i want to make an analogy between these malls and our universe this will make the things simpler for you so what is that analogy the analogy is that Similar to the malls where they have different kinds of things or large collection of different kinds of things, our universe is also composed of different kinds of atoms. So now you might be thinking what is atom? So let's understand atom first. What is atom? So atom is the smallest constituent of any matter. So for example, if I break a piece of chalk, first of all I will get two pieces of chalk then if I again started breaking those pieces, then finally I'll get a powder-like substance. Then if I took a particle from that powder and if I again started breaking that particle, then finally a stage will be reached. In that stage, that particle is not breakable further. So that stage, which is the smallest stage, which we cannot see through our naked eye, is called as the atom. So this is atom and there are different kinds of atoms are present in our universe. So till now there are basically 118 kinds of atoms present in our universe or that were known, that are known to us. So I am saying till now, that means these atoms are getting discovered day by day. Among these 118, 94 are naturally occurring and rest proteins are man-made or synthesized. This 118, this number may sound quite a large number, but this 118 different atoms are not completely random. They have certain similarities between them. And due to the similarities, like the similarities in the malls, in the malls they have similar kind of things placed together. For example, clothes are placed together, foods are placed together. We can also arrange these atoms according to their similarity in certain groups. And if all these atoms are arranged according to the group in certain position, we'll get a table. And in that table, all the atoms are arranged according to their properties. And that table is called as 
periodic table so here comes the most important term of this chapter periodic table so what is the reason or what is the reason behind naming it periodic table it is just a table but why periodic so periodic means repeating after certain intervals so here in this table the similar properties are repeated after certain intervals that is why this table is named as periodic table and in this table all the 118 atoms that are present in our universe are arranged according to their properties now let's discuss how this periodic table helps us in understanding chemistry so there are different roles played by this periodic table and we'll discuss them one by one so the first role is that the periodic table of elements describes the atomic structure of all the elements that are known to mankind for instance if a person wants to find out how many electron an atom or a certain element has and what is the weight of this that element then he can find it out just by looking at the periodic table in periodic table there are different elements and each element has its own set of data and they are unique no two element has has similar kind of data so that is why this periodic table helps us in finding out the periodic or important information like atomic weight uh, what is the size what is the number of electron what is the number of proton and etc so this is the first role the second role is that in periodic table elements are arranged according to their properties so the similar ele elements are arranged in similar groups so by using this periodic table we can predict the properties of the elements that are not discovered till now so isn't it so amazing that we can predict the nature we can predict the properties of the elements which are not discovered till now so this is definitely one of the biggest advantage of periodic table so another important role played by periodic table is that in periodic table you will see that there are 118 elements and each element is studied in chemistry in different branches you will see that in higher classes there are different branches like organic chemistry inorganic chemistry which deals with different kinds of elements and this periodic table is only that place it is the only place where all these elements are placed together and we can have a overall idea about all the elements together so in other words this periodic table plays an important role in unifying chemistry or in unifying all the elements together so these are the some of the importances of periodic table or the roles played by periodic table so that is why it is very important for us to know about this periodic table in this chapter i will be frequently using some terms like atoms elements molecules so let's first understand this term so first of all i will understand atom so atoms are i have already mentioned atoms are nothing but they are the smallest constituent of a matter so they are the smallest constituent which you cannot see and atoms are composed of electrons protons and neutrons so these are the subatomic particles and all atoms are made up of these three subatomic particles now let's understand elements so elements these are not different kinds of thing so it is not a thing it's a kind of thing so basically it's a category so what kind of thing it's specifically it's a kind of atom and what kind of atom will be is determined by the number of protons okay so we know that all atoms are made up of electron proton and neutron and the number of proton can have different in different atoms so in one atom we can have one proton in another atom we can have two protons so this type of atom are named as elements so elements just not different thing it's just a name given to different kinds of atom for example if one atom has one proton then that atom is named as hydrogen if another atom has two proton in that situation that atom is named as helium so this is the relationship between atom and element so you can use this term interchangeably this sounds a little bit confusing right so let's use another analogy to understand this atom and element clearly so you can consider an elements as brands and atoms as cars so similar to atoms we know that atoms are composed of electrons protons and neutrons and cars are also made up of certain things like wheels steering engines seats 
so these are the parts of cards and all cards are made up of these parts okay but can you say that all the cards are same no right we can have different cards from different brands for example we can have cards from tata mahindra toyota hyundai okay so these are different brands but brands are nothing name given to each kind of cards so in uh, this each brand we can consider them as elements so this is the relationship between elements and atoms and brands and cards okay so that is why we can use this term interchangeably we can use the term in place of one we can use another it means same it doesn't matter if it is a one atom or 100 million atom each element is an each atom is an element still if you are trying to thinking what is the difference between them are all element is same with atom it's just like asking are toyota is same with car so yeah they are basically same but toyota is the name given to the kind of car okay so this is element now let's understand what is molecule molecules are completely different from atoms so molecules in molecules we, we can have different kinds of atoms strongly bonded together so similar kinds of atoms all also can be bonded together in molecules for example in hydrogen molecule in hydrogen molecule we can have two hydrogen atoms bonded together that is why the molecular formula of hydrogen is h2 and here the two hydrogen represent each atom similarly we can have molecules with different kinds of atoms also for example in water molecule two hydrogen atoms are bonded together with one oxygen atom so here we can have two different kinds of atoms which is hydrogen and oxygen so this is molecule okay so i hope you have understood this term well so that's all in this session in this session i have tried to give you a overall understanding about periodic table what is the need of classification and how this periodic table plays an important role in understanding chemistry and in this chapter we will be basically de dealing with the history to present part it's just like a story so we'll be first dealing with the early attempts that were done by different scientists then we'll see the what are the limitations of those attempts and how we reached the present stage of modern periodic table so it's just like a story and I hope you will find it a very interesting chapter. And this chapter is very important for you because if you don't know about periodic table, you don't know chemistry. <laughs>